Okay then, now that the rigging is complete, it's time to get some animation put onto this little chap so that he's ready to go into the engine. We're going to start with creating an idle cycle, which is the one that plays when the character receives no input from the player. So when they're standing still, you don't want them to be dead still, you want them to look as if they're still alive. Sometimes it is called a keep alive loop or a breathe loop as well. Now I want you to kind of suspend your belief a little bit for this because we're going to make this robot look like he's breathing and of course robots generally don't need to breathe but to make it look like he's not just dead still we're going to create this idle cycle. So as you can see I've got my rig open and to make sure that I don't save over anything that I want to keep I'm going to save it straight away as idle. So file save scene as and we'll call it idle, so it's going to be 12 for me, idle cycle, there we go, save. Next up, so you can see that um, I think I left you with the channel box open, but in human IK what I want to do now is just make a change here, and so here we've got this kind of full body control, so if I just select a control and pull him over, you see the whole thing moves, and I'm going to move this over to here, and this is where we're going to do our animation, and what it means is that if we pull it over, it won't move the whole body, uh, but it will move the whole arm. And this is just to make sure that we don't end up setting keys on things that we don't want to. It gives us a little bit more control as we're going forward. What we're also going to do is just change out of the modeling view. Now there is an animation view, so if we have a look at this. So this gives you um, a viewport up here and a graph editor down here. I don't really I like it's good for the graph editor but it doesn't give me enough space here I'm not a massive fan of that so I'm going to do it a different way I'm going to go to Maya Classic and that's because it gives me a timeline down here which we'll need uh, and then I'm going to put a graph editor on the side uh, and I'm going to suggest you do the same thing so what I'll do first of all is just go to Windows Animation Editors and Graph Editor and open one of those up and you can see for me it's already docked to the side because that's where I tend to keep it. It might open for you in a separate window like this. If it does, just move it over to the side like so. And then you can kind of have your views side by side, which is the way that I prefer to work. One other thing that I want you to check is that this little icon down here isn't red. So it shouldn't be by default, but this is auto key. And again, to make sure that we are in control and we don't set any keys that we don't mean to, we just need to make sure that that's off and that'll keep everything nice and clean and organized. The first thing we need to do to get this animation going then is to create uh, our first sort of base pose. This is the, how he's just gonna sort of be stood. Uh, and we want this to be fairly dynamic. So I'll just start building this now. We can just make that a little bit smaller because we don't need so much of that just yet. And we'll start putting this pose together. So I'm going to start by getting the hips controller and you'll notice I do a lot of selecting with this marquee selection and just nip the edge of what I want. I find that's a little more accurate for me. So we're just going to drop his uh, knees down. I'll probably raise that back up a little bit later but just to give me room to move his legs we're going to drop his waist down a little bit. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to bring this foot forward and out a little bit to about there. And then I'm also going to attempt to rotate this out a little bit. Can I do that by moving the toe? Let's see. Mm, it's going at a funny angle. So what we'll do for that is we'll just drop into the top view. I'm pressing F to find that particular control. Um, it should be that one. Let's just double check. Yep. Yeah. And then I'm just going to rotate it using this yellow manipulator here. Like that. And that will just make sure that it stays flat on the ground because otherwise that wants to go out a little bit. Okay, then what we'll do is take the other foot, and this one's going to move back and out as well. Kind of like that. Now the thing about back feet is, generally we'll raise our heel up off the ground if uh, that's how we want to stand. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go into my top view again, just so that I can rotate that out a little bit. And then I'm going to do some other stuff with it, and I'll probably need my other views to help me get this. So the first thing I'll do is I want to raise this up so that it looks like he's sort of using his uh, toes there to get the extra height. And then I'll just turn the grid on so that I can get that lined up. And I think what I'm also going to do is just rotate it that way a little bit as well. So that should give that a fairly nice look. So let's have a look at how these legs are. Not bad. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to bring the hips back up, because this is kind of my up pose, really. 
So that's not bad. I think the uh, this foot here might just need to go back a little more. Mm, no, I don't like it further back. I think I like it actually a little bit closer in. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just raise, raise his hips up a little bit further. And maybe just bring his hips further forward a bit as well. Oh, that's better. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do then is just try and sort his arms out. And obviously we don't want these to be stuck out the way they are. That's that's too much. Let's just raise them up a little bit more again. There we are. Um, so let's get... I tend to just do these with the wrist controllers if I can. And what we're going to do is just kind of bring it down, bring it in. Uh, and this one's kind of going to be slightly back, this arm. So we're going to bring it down a little bit more. Let's just make this view a bit bigger. Uh, bring it to that kind of position and then... There's a fairly good starting point. I'm going to get the shoulder controller and just sort of, not the shoulder, the elbow controller, just to bring that out a little bit as well. Let's see what we get. That's not a bad start. I might have to come back and refine that. And then we'll get this wrist here. And I want this one to sort of do the same thing, but this one's going to be forward a little bit. We'll bring that down. Bring it in, we don't want it to be too far out. I think what I'll do as well is just rotate that hand around a little bit. Same with this one, everything's a bit too straight there. And maybe just rotate that in. Same with this one. So you can see I'm just sort of building this pose as I go until I start to feel happy with it. And one of the, the views that I've got to be the most conscious of here is the back view since that's the one that will likely see the player from most of the time so I don't want that to get too out of control really I think I'm also just going to rotate this a little bit so that shoulders back and he's kind of leaning that way and then we're just going to counteract that by bringing the head back so that's a bit more forward facing and that should then give me a little more freedom with what I can do with this arm. Okay. So I think we'll use that as the base pose. I think that's good enough. That will do. Uh, I think I'll just make one more slight change to the fingers because they look far too rigid. So if you just let that end controller and rotate them around, you'll see that that kind of does the whole hand and then the thumbs you kind of got to rotate on two different axes so we'll bring it in a little bit uh, but you can see that kind of goes up too much so if we bring it down that way that looks a bit nicer and then we'll do the same for the other thumb make sure that I have a select the one control that I want so I'll bring that in a little bit and take it down okay so we'll say that that is the sort of base pose that we're going for that everything else is going to be built from. What we need to do next is get things so that they actually move. So for this loop, I've decided that it's pretty much going to be a 50 frame loop. So you can see at the moment that we have 200 frames on our timeline and it's displaying 120. We don't really need to take that 200 number down, but we do need to take this one down. I'm going to just type 51. And the reason that I'm doing that is because it's a 50 frame loop and we start at one. Um, so it's one to 51 will give us 50 frames. And now we're going to start getting some movement. So let's just select the hips and check that it's doing what I want it to. Yep. So when I move the hips up and down, everything above the hips goes. That's good. So with just the hips selected, we're going to put our playhead on frame one. And then we're going to press S on the keyboard. And what that does is sets a keyframe. We also need a keyframe setting at 51. Because this is a loop, frames one and 51 need to be identical to make sure that it returns back to the position it started at. And then in the middle we have frame 26 and on frame 26 this is going to be our down part of the animation and what I'm going to do is just on the y-axis bring him down a little bit we don't want to go too far with this or it starts to look a bit a bit too much and then we'll press S and then if we play it you should start to see that we've got the beginnings of this sort of breathe animation so that's the first part of it done essentially the last thing we'll need to do with this actually involves the graph editor. So if I just bring the graph editor back to it so it's got some space, 
and we'll select that hips controller again and I'll press A. In fact, I'm going to select everything like this and then I'll press A again and you'll see that there are two curves here that have got some movement on them that's represented by these lines here. Uh, and what we're going to do is make sure that this kind of happens forever. Uh, and it's not ever so important on this particular loop, but it will be important on the other. So we'll get into the habit of doing it early. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And what we're going to do is go to View. And we're going to select Infinity. And what that does is shows us what the animation does before and after the keyframes we've set. And we can have it cycle so that it keeps going. To do that, we're going to go into, let's just select everything. We're going to do Curves pre-infinity cycle and you'll see that that curve now is curving before we set any keyframes and if we do the same for curves post infinity cycle that will happen forever which is really useful to us in getting this loop especially when we start adding offsets down the line so that's the hips done I'm happy with that the next thing we'll do is grab this chest controller just here and we're going to do the same sort of thing so we're going to go to frame one and press s frame 51 and press S and then go to frame 26 and on this one we want him to kind of look like he's breathing so we'll put the rotate tool on and we're just going to rotate him forward a touch not too much we don't want this to be distracting just enough that we can see it and then we'll press S and then we're going to play this to test it out yeah that's really good that's doing pretty much what I want it to do. Now, the problem with this is it all starts sort of very mechanical. And one of the ways that we can alleviate that is with something called an offset. Uh, and it kind of creates a bit more of like a wave of movement going through the character rather than it all being this sort of mechanical look we've got now. Um, and this is fairly easy to do in this case. So if we just go to um, make sure that we're seeing all the curves and we select everything like that, we're going to do our pre and post infinity. So curves, pre infinity cycle, curves, post infinity cycle. And this is really important for this one because what we're going to do now is move these frames along the timeline a little bit. So I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and then I'm going to do middle mouse for this and just drag to the right. And then I'm going to move it about, what have I got in my notes? About five frames to the right. So one, two, I've already done three, four, five. And you can see that now there's no keyframe on frame one anymore, but it's moved to frame six, frame 31, and actually frame 56, which we can't see here. But the reason that this offset is important is if we zoom in on this curve, there is still some movement happening before frame six. And that means it's going to stay even despite the fact that we've moved it on. So we'll do that with anything that we offset. That's really important. Okay. So what we'll do now is play this again and see how it's looking. You'll see that there's a bit more of kind of a wave of movement going on because we've done the offset on the chest. So I think that looks pretty good. What we need to do next is a similar sort of thing, but this time to the head. So let's go to frame one. And what I'm going to do on frame one is just select the head controller. I'm actually going to move it up ever so slightly. And that kind of creates a bit of overlapping action, um, which kind of looks a little bit better. So with that done, we're going to set a keyframe on frame one, move to frame 51, set it again. And then on 26, as we've done so far, we're now going to rotate it down a little bit. And that's going to make the head look like it's got a bit of weight and like there's some effort going on. So we'll do that and we'll just play it to make sure that that's working yep yeah, that's not bad and what we're going to do now is offset that movement so let's just select this again we're going to make sure that we can see all the curves we're going to select all the curves let's just press a make sure they're all showing up yeah so it's going to be curves pre-infinity cycle curves post-infinity cycle and then we're going to do this offset so I'm holding shift and my middle mouse button I'm going to move this one I think probably another 10. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and that's moved it to frame 11. That's perfect. So then we'll test this and see if I'm happy with it. I might decide to tweak this a little bit. Let's see. Oh, 
oh no, that's not bad. Oh, I quite like the fact that his head's quite huge, uh, and now it looks like it's got some real weight to it because of the way that we've animated it. So that's pretty good there. The next thing we need to do is just something with the hands. So I'm finding all of these bones at the moment a little bit distracting. So let's try and turn these off. So I'm just clicking this icon here that turns off your forward kinematics. And then we've just got the controllers for inverse kinematics showing. And then we'll have a look at what the hands are currently doing. So they're going up and down. That makes sense. I'm happy with that. Uh, but I kind of want them more to look like they're staying still. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to select both wrist controllers. And on frame one, we're going to press S. And we're just going to... Yeah, we'll set them on frame 51 and we'll press S as well. Okay. And then at 26, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put it in this front view here. I'm going to turn on this tool here. It's called the grease pencil. And I'm just going to go to here. It'll let me make a mark on the screen. So I'm going to put one mark here and one mark here. This tells me where those wrist controllers are on frame 51 and frame 1. So now if I move to 26, I can see sort of where they've moved to. So what I can do now, I can just turn the grease pencil tool off. I'm going to select this controller here. So this is just the character's right hand. I'm going to move it up and out a little bit like that. And then the same with this one. So I'm moving up to about the same height. But I am moving it out a little bit as well. And we'll press S. And then what I'll do is just go back to frame 51. And remove that mark I made with the grease pencil. I can turn that tool off now. Oh, I can try to. Go away tool. There we go. And then we'll see how that looks. Okay, so if you're paying attention, you'll see the mistake I made. I made the movement here on this wrist, but I didn't set the keyframe. So let's just make sure that I sort that out. I should know better than this. Okay, so I'll put the grease pencil tool back on. I'm going to put my mark back in. Then I'm going to go to frame 26. And then I'm going to turn that tool off. Put this roughly where I want it to be, up and out a little bit. Press S this time. And then we'll just play it. Yeah, that's not bad. I think I can get down with that. Oh yeah, right. So let's now just kill the grease pencil tool again. Uh, we'll just get rid of that. Where did I put it on frame one this time? Get rid of that and close the tool. And then what I want to do is get the offset sorted out. So let's just make sure that for this, you'll notice as well that there are a lot more controls on this because we've got two wrists to work with. So I'm gonna select both of them and just click once at the top, scroll down to the bottom and shift select, that will show me all my curves. Press A to make sure they're all showing up and select them. We're gonna do curves, pre-infinity cycle, curves, post-infinity cycle, all good. And then we're gonna do the offset, which is gonna be about the same as for the head. I might do it a couple of frames before or after, we'll see how it looks. So middle mouse button and shift, and I'm gonna to go to the right. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's try twelve frames. Okay, we'll see how this offset looks. Mm, not a fan of that. Let's make a little tweak. I'm just going to put the offset back a little bit. So instead of it being that far forward, we're going to bring it back a little bit. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. We'll try that. Not really enjoying that either. We'll go further. So we'll go to people five. One, two, three, four, five. I'll put it on about frame 18. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so that is pretty much the idle cycle. So what I would recommend to you now is that you can go on and refine this um, a little bit more if you choose to. So if I wasn't trying to do this quick... Um, I would probably put a little bit of movement on the fingers. I'd have some side to side movement and probably rotate things side to side as well. Um, just so that it doesn't look too mechanical. Although one of the reasons we're doing this as a robot is because mechanical movement does at least make sense. 
So what we'll do next is we'll move on to the walk cycle and we'll bash out a basic walk cycle as well. And then we'll be getting well on our way to having a character that we can put into the engine. So make sure that you've saved this as idle cycle, file, save scene. And then into the next step, we can make our next cycle. I'll see you there. With the idle cycle complete and saved then, it's now time to move on to our walk cycle. So let's make a start on that. So I've saved this. So what I want to do now to make sure that I don't accidentally mess this up is open up a version of the clean rig again. So we'll do file, open scene. Let's find clean rig and open. And I don't need to save that because it's already saved. So here is my clean rig then. What I want to do this time is set this up for a 24 frame cycle. Uh, and that means we're going to go from 1 to 25 because we're starting at 1, not 0. So we'll set this to 25 like so. Next thing I want to do is just move my views around a little bit. Uh, and we'll see how this goes. So what I'm going to do first of all is move my graph editor down to the bottom for this. You'll hopefully see why in a minute. There we go. And I want another perspective view. So I'm going to go to panels and we're going to tear off a copy of this and this gives me another perspective view and then I'm going to move this to just sit down the side there and just resize that a little bit like so then I'm going to change this view to a side view so I'm going to go predefined bookmarks left side because it's a copy it will also make this one a left side but that's okay we'll get to that uh, and then on this one, we're going to go to panels, perspective, and we'll just make a new one because I just overwrote my other perspective camera. And this now gives me two views. So this one, I've got a little bit more freedom. I can rotate around. And this one gives me a good profile view so that I can see what I'm doing. What I'm also going to need to do so that I can see when the feet are contacting the floor in this view is turn on the grid. And you can see that I now have this thick line here, which is representing the floor. And I'll just go to show and we'll turn off cameras, which removes a line there so that, that doesn't get confusing for me. And with that, then I think we're ready to start animating. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my human IK control is on this middle one here, which is body part. And now making sure that the playhead is on frame one, we're going to set up the first pose of this walk cycle, which is known as the contact pose. So for this, I'm just going to change to my channel box so that I can see that I've got the right values as I want them. And then we're going to select the hips controller. And the first thing I want to do is just move the hips down a little bit so that we've got some bend in the knees. So let's just move this down. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. So I've just got a little bit of a bend in the knees like that. And I think I'm just going to round that down to 61. There we go. And then we're going to work on the character's left foot. I always like to take the left foot forward first, which is this one. And you can see that I use this view here to select that because it would be very difficult to select it here. And then with my rotate tool, we're going to rotate this up to something like that. And I might change this in a minute once I get it in place, but something like that. And then we're just going to move this foot up so that it's in line with the ground. And we're also going to move it forward. So just make sure that I'm getting this where I want it. Just bring this down so it's contacting the ground. I think I'm just going to rotate that around a touch further. And yeah, I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to round this to 23. And let's just make sure that I am happy with the rotation. Just something like that. That looks quite nice. Now we're going to move on to the right foot, which I can select fairly easily from this view now because I've moved the left out of the way. And this one needs to be rotated down slightly to something like that. And then we're going to bring it back in line with the ground. And this one needs to be moved back. Let's have a look. I think that's just once rotating a little more. Bring that up a touch. Maybe not quite that much. Let's just put that back. Yeah, that's quite nice. And believe it or not, that's pretty much everything we need to do right now for the first pose, the contact pose. So what we'll do at this stage is set keyframes on everything that we have adjusted so far. So that's the hips controller. So I'll select that and then press S. 
I'm also going to select this foot controller and press S and the other foot controller and press S. And that is the beginning of our first pose done, the contact pose. Next, we need to move to frame four. So we're going to make a change on this one, basically every three frames. So frame four is the next stage that we need to go to. And this is known as the down pose. It's the lowest that the hips go in the whole cycle. So that's the body part that we'll start with. We'll select the hips controller and we need to move down a little bit. Let's see how far we want to go. Yeah, I like that. So I think we'll round that to 59 because we're pretty close to that anyway. If I can, I like working in whole numbers. It's easier for me to make tweaks to. Okay, so we've done that. Next thing we want to do is I'm going to select this foot and I'm going to rotate it back to flat, which I believe is just this axis here. Yeah. So I've put that flat and then I want to get it back on the ground. So let's just bring it in a little bit so I've got room to do that and we'll get it back in contact with the ground. That looks pretty good. And then I just want to get this sort of into position where I think it looks good. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. So we'll set that, we'll round that to 21. And you can see that that now is, the foot's gone flat and it's also come back slightly as well. On this one, the back leg actually gets a little bit more extreme. So what we'll do is we're going to rotate this round a little bit more to something like that which is going to necessitate bringing it up so that it's not going through the floor. And we're also going to need to move it back as well. So uh, let's see, maybe not quite rotated that much. Let's just bring it down a little bit. Yeah, we'll give that a go, I think. So I'm on about minus 32.5 there. Let's round that to minus 32, I think should be good. Okay, I think I'm happy with that, so let's key those. So we'll select the hips controller, press S, select this foot, press S, and select this foot and press S. And then we can see that already we're getting the beginnings of our walk cycle. So next we need to move to frame seven. This is what's known as the passing pose, and it requires the hips to go back up a little bit. So let's just start with moving the hips up. Where do I want them to be? It's gotta be sort of higher than where they started. Yeah, we'll go for that. And we're going to go for 62, I think. Cool. I'm going to work on this foot first, as I tend to do in each step. And I think I'm going to want to move this foot back almost to where it started. What do we think? I'm going to set this to one, I think. Just a little bit before where it started. And obviously, I need to get it back to being on the ground as well. Because I've just lifted it up by moving the hips up. So I'm happy with the position of that foot. Let's select the other foot. And on this one, I am going to rotate it forward, or down rather, a little bit. And this is going to create a bit of a drag movement, hopefully. And then I'm going to move it forward. Mm, to about there. And then I'm also going to raise it up. And that's just going to create the effect of this leg overlapping this one that's coming back. I don't want to raise it too far off the ground because it can look a bit too stompy. Yeah, so I think I'm pretty happy with those positions as well. So let's key the hips and both feet because they're the only bits that we've made changes on so far. Good stuff. So that's our passing pose, hopefully in place. Let's see how that's coming together. Yeah, not bad so far. So then we'll move to frame 10. This is known as the up pose. This is the pose where the hips are at the highest. Uh, and I think I'm just going to type in 63 for this. I don't want to take it too much higher, but I do want it to be higher. So that's done that. We could possibly go a little bit higher. Maybe you want to experiment with that, but I'm going to stick with 63. And then the left foot needs to go back slightly. Um, so it's not allowing me to push it all the way back yet. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of a rotate on the toe because this is starting to go back now and going to sort of a tiptoe position. So we'll do that first and then I'm going to start moving it back like this. Yeah, I don't want to really go any further than that. So we'll call it minus 21. That's pretty nice. And then we'll get the other foot. So this is his right foot. And we'll move this forward. It's going to come forward quite a lot, I think. 
we need to get some of this drag off the foot and bring it almost flat just a little bit of drag on it like that and I'm probably going to bring it down a touch this is going to be kind of seeking the ground now this is going to be allowing him to put the foot down soon so we'll go for that kind of height there uh, and hopefully that should do it so let's now select all of these so we'll key the hips key both feet and then we'll see what's going on there yeah that's pretty nice and now we're going to move on to frame 13 and for this one we're not going to put in the um, the positions manually because this needs to be a symmetrical walk cycle so what we actually need is for frame 1 and frame 13 to be identical except to switch the position of the feet so we'll do it with the hips first because that's the most straightforward part to do this with so we're going to go to frame 1 and select the hips and then we're going to right click on frame 1 here go to copy and that copies that position of the hips then we'll go to frame 13 right click paste and then paste like that and you'll see that the position of the hips changed and they are now going up and down between those keys so that means that they are now going to be in an identical position on frame 1 and 13 now we want to do something similar with the feet but have them switch positions and I'll show you how I'm going to do this one so I'm going to go to frame 1 and I'll select the one that's at the back perfect we're going to copy and then while I'm still on frame 1 I'm going to switch to the other foot because now I know that I've switched them then I'll move to frame 13 right click paste and paste and that's put it back here which is where we wanted it but there is one problem it's also moved it over to be in line with this foot uh, and that is normal that's expected what we need to do is just put that back on its own side and what we're going to do is just invert the x-axis for that so it's currently set to minus 10.448 let's remove the minus and that puts it back on its own side and we've reversed that foot position but this is important you can see that while these are dark red this one here is light red which means we need to press s again just to make sure that that stays on its own side otherwise it'll move back over so we'll press s and that's that foot done with that still selected then i'm going to go back to frame one i'm going to right click copy i'm going to select the other foot go back to 13 where i'm going to paste there you go you can see that that's now crossed over which we don't want it to do so we'll invert the x-axis by putting a minus in there and then we need to press s while we've still got that foot selected and then you can see now we've done that we don't have to set the keys because there is already a key on the hips and there's a keyframe on that foot and a keyframe on that foot so now what that means is that we should i'll just make this view active be able to scrub through from one side to the next so that's the first part of our walk cycle so we've got one step but we need to have two steps so that this will properly loop so what we do now on the next set of poses is we just use the frames we've already got and we swap them over to the other feet uh, and that makes it really easy so that's frame 13 done we're going to move three frames on one two oh, hang on. one two three so frame 16 is going to be what we do next so let's start with um, the hips then so we're going to get frame 4 right click copy go to frame 16 and paste that's the hips done and then back to frame 4 and as I did previously I'll select the back foot first this is just I do it in this order so that I know which ones I've already done so select the back foot copy select the front foot move to 16 and paste and then we need to make sure that we invert translate x and then we press s that's that foot done then we go back to four and we copy we switch the feet go to 16 paste and paste and then we'll invert translate x again and press s that's another pose done and we'll repeat this now by reversing seven onto 19 so let's go to seven first select the hips copy then we're going to go to 19 and paste back to seven select whichever is the back foot and copy select the other foot move to 19 and paste 
There we go. And then invert the translate X and press S. Then we go back to seven. We copy this frame. We then select the other foot, go to 19 and paste. Lovely. And then we invert the translate X just as we've done previously. And we press S. And then we've got kind of one more of these to do, and then we can just copy all of frame one again. So let's go to um, 10 this time. And I'm just going to select the back foot again. It doesn't matter. Like I could select this one, but I always start with the back and move over. Um, but in fact, what we'll do is we'll do the hips first. So we'll select the hips and we'll copy. Move to 22 and paste. Lovely. Then we'll go back to 10. I'm going to select the back foot and copy select the front foot move to 22 and paste nice invert x don't forget to do that otherwise it'll look all weird press s and then back to frame 10 and we're going to copy this one select the other foot go to 22 paste and invert don't forget to press s at this stage, I'm just going to run it through, and I'm going to look at it. Oh, undo that. I'm going to look at it in this view to make sure that I haven't forgotten to press S and that nothing crosses over. Yeah, so far so good. That looks wicked. Okay, so now what we need to do is just make sure that 1 and 25 are identical. So I'm going to select the hips, that foot controller, and that foot controller. So I've just copied them all or selected them all at once. Then I'm going to copy frame one, move to 25 and paste. And then we'll let that play through and see what's happening. So there will be a little bit of lag on 25 because that is one and 25, the same frame is playing twice. Uh, and I want that for now, but if at any point you want to preview it without that, the frames that will actually export, we just take off that frame. So I'll just play 24 frames and it removes that little bit of lag. So let's just have a look in this view here. That's not bad. So as you'll no doubt notice, it is a little bit mechanical, but he's a robot and that works. So, so far, so good. We've got the legs done. The next thing we're gonna do is just a little bit more work on the hips to make sure that the walk looks a little more natural. We're still gonna allow it to be mostly mechanical. Uh, but we'll add some rotation in the hips just to make things feel a little bit nicer. So I'll select the hips and we're going to go to frame one. And what I'm really interested in for this one um, is the rotate. So you can see currently we have keys on the rotate, but nothing's happening. See, I'm just visualizing this in my graph editor so that I can see what's happening. So the only thing that we should have changed at the moment is this translate Y. Um, and whilst I'm in translate Y, uh, we can see that there is this particular curve here doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to select, I'm going to shift select that, my tangents and just rotate that around. So I'm holding my middle mouse button to do this just so that flows a little more. Okay, so that sorts that one out. Uh, now what I'm interested in, I believe, is rotate X. What we're going to want to do is rotate the hips forward a little bit. So I'm just going to do this, and you can see that up here it shows that it's the rotate X that's moving. So that's the axis that I'm going to be concentrating on. And we want to lean into whichever foot is making contact. So what we're going to do then is on frame one, I'm just going to want to rotate it towards the left foot. So if I just rotate, and I only want to do this slightly because I do want this to be subtle. I'm going to rotate so you can see that to put that foot forward it's going minus. So I'm going to do, I think on that one, minus two. And then what I'll do is reverse that on frame 13. So I need to just press S on frame one first to make sure that that sticks. And then we're going to go to 13 and we're going to just put two on rotate X to reverse that and press S. And then the, we know that on 25, let's just bring 25 back, we need to have this identical to frame one, so that's gonna be minus two, and we'll press S. Okay, so you can see that our curve is there, but there are now a lot of curves that aren't really helping with this. 
uh, they're just getting in the way. So I'm gonna select these three keyframes here and just hit delete on my keyboard and same for these here. And you'll see that that now creates a bit more of a smooth curve, which is what we wanted. So now as we play the walk cycle, I'll do it in this view, you can see, mostly because it's illustrated in the arms, that he is swaying uh, left and right a little bit, which helps to just add a little bit more magic to this uh, cycle. What I also want to do is give him a little bit of side to side wiggle when he's got a foot planted and he's putting all his weight on it. Um, and we're gonna do that on frame seven. This is where he's got plenty of weight on, uh, in this case, his left foot. And this one, I think is gonna be this axis here. Uh, and we can see that it's showing us lots of changes, but the only one we're really interested in is rotate Y for this particular one, because that's the one that's moving the most. So on frame seven, what we need to do is make sure that that hip raises the one with the weight on it, like that. So what I'm gonna do is I only want this to be subtle again. So on rotate Y, which is the one that I know I want, let's just put this straight again. I'm gonna set this to two. And that'll just rotate it in slightly and we'll press S on there. And then we're gonna to go to frame 19 and we're gonna put minus two on this one. And we'll press S again. And then you can see that these keyframes now need to be here. If we delete them, it will delete them off of the rotate Y as well. But you can see that's now going up and down and back up and that's creating a nice little um, loop as well. So let's play that and see how it looks. I'll have a look at it in this view. Uh, just take that extra frame off. Yeah, that's not bad. That's looping fairly well. There's a little bit of a, a sharp change here. But I think that's going to be okay. The next thing we're going to do then is we're going to kind of move up our model. And we're going to sort of counter what's happening in the hips on the chest because as one leg moves forward so let's say the left leg moves forward the right shoulder tends to move forward but you can see that as this leg is forward here it's the uh, the same shoulders forward so we kind of need to counter that a little bit before i do that though i'm just going to go back to my human ik control and i'm going to change to this which is selection so I'm no longer now moving on um, the kind of whole joint chain. It's just a particular part of it. And that's because it just, one of the things of this rig is that even though it's really great to set up, there are some quirks to animating with it. Uh, and for this particular part, we need to just move here to make things work as expected. So let's just get ready for this. So we're gonna make sure that we're on frame one and we're not gonna animate on one of the controls this time we're gonna animate on this actual joint. So it's called Rob Control Spine is the name of it. And you can see that it selects kind of everything above the hips. And what I'm gonna do is just see which axis I'm rotating on. So it's the X axis, which is good. And I'm just gonna to need to bring this forward a little bit to counteract what's happening uh, below. So I'm probably gonna rotate it forward by about um, five, I think it looks good. Yeah. So then I'm just gonna press S on that. Go to frame 13, and I'm going to invert that, so it's going to be minus 5. You see that that has now inverted it, so I'll press S. And then on frame 25, let's bring 25 back. I'll go back to 5 and press S. And then we'll just see what that's looking like. Oh, undo that, silly Shane. See what that's looking like in this view. Yeah, and that's a lot better because it's just counteracting what the legs are doing and it makes the, everything look like there's more weight going on in this walk cycle. So that's pretty good. Now it's time to make him look less like he's walking on a tightrope. So I'll take his arms from being in the T position and get them swinging as they should. So let's just move back to frame one for this. And for this one, I'm gonna be working on this arm that's closest to us first, which is the right arm. And I'm not gonna be using this controller because we've changed the method. If we try and rotate it, it won't work on the controller anyway. So we are gonna be working on that joint there. And it's called Rob Control Right Arm. And you can see this one will let us rotate it. Before we do that though, it's gonna be easier to just get the hands kind of in the position that we want them in before we start swinging them around. And for that, we do actually want 
to go back to body part control in the human eye case. So let's just put that on. And then what I'm gonna do is try and make a fist. So if I get this end controller here, and if we just rotate this round a couple of times, you'll see that it bends in the two finger sections. I've got to get them bent nicely around. That's kind of nice. And then we've got to do the same with the thumb, but first of all, we just kind of need to bring it down, which is that axis there. And then we can bend it in a little bit. It doesn't matter if they overlap a little bit. That's fine. That'll do for a fist on that side. Let's repeat that over here. Okay, so we've got our fists in place. That'll just make it look kind of nice. And then we're going to go back to human IK. We'll just go back to selection. And then we can start to do what we need to do. So as I said, I'm gonna be working on the character's right arm. Okay, so we're gonna rotate this down. Which is what we need to do first of all. And I just want to make sure that I can see my channel box here. And I'm gonna rotate this. I don't want this to go too far. Something like that. Uh, and then we're gonna to need to rotate this forward. It's the left leg forward, so it will mean that the right arm needs to go forward. Something like this. Uh, but what, what we also need to do is kind of just curl it in a little bit as well. So, that's a decent starting point. And what we'll do then is just on that controller, we're gonna press S. And then on frame 13, you can see now that this foot is back, this arm, or this foot is forward, this arm needs to go back. So what we'll do is we'll move the arm back. And then, so if we move it back like that, we're also gonna to need to move it in a little bit. And we're gonna to need to do that. And you're going to see a problem that I'm going to have with this. So you can see that's kind of where it needs to be. That makes sense. And we'll press S. And then what we'll do is we'll just take frame one, we'll copy that, and we'll paste. So that's going to give us our loop. So if we just start by looking at this view here, let's play it. That's not too bad. But if we look in this view, the arm really kicks out as he's swinging it. Uh, and this is another one of those quirks of this rig. The way that the arm set up is not quite ideal for the arm swing. Uh, and so it can take a lot of trial and error to get this to behave itself. So I'm gonna show you what I've done and you can just use similar values to how I put it together. So it took a little bit of trial and error but I'm just gonna put in the values that I know that I like for this. So rotate X, I'm gonna put in minus 30. So I've moved to frame one for this. So we'll do minus 30 there. For Y, we're gonna put in 70. And for Z, we're gonna go minus 55. And we'll set that. And then we're gonna copy it to frame 25. Like so. Frame 13, what I want on this one is 75. See, that doesn't change much. 70, this won't change much either and 85. It's changed very little from where I had it, but this will make a difference. And then if we play this again, you'll see that this, the swing out is still there. So what we're gonna need are some frames to sort of correct this. I call them correction frames. We're gonna need one on seven and one on 19. So I'll go to frame seven first, and then the values that I like for this correction are 35 on rotate X, 70 on rotate Y, and 20 on rotate Z, like that. You can see that's just brought that in a little bit and then we'll press S. And then we'll move to frame 19 and put in the values that I like for this one, which are going to be 30 on the X axis. On the Y axis, we're gonna have 75. That just brings it in a little bit. And the Z axis is going to be 20 and then we'll set that. And at this stage, if we play it, you'll see that it does 
kick out a little bit, but it's more that the arm goes behind that looks quite good. Uh, and once we put the bend in the elbow of the arm, it's also going to look pretty good. So what we'll do now is we'll actually set the animation up on the elbow to sort of finish this off and make it look quite nice. So we'll stop that play and go to frame one. And I'm just going to select the elbow joint there. On frame one, I'm going to set the Z rotation, which is this one. And I want that to be so that it looks kind of like that. Yeah, that looks good. I think so. I've just created a bit of a bend in the arm there. So we'll set that on frame one. And we'll also set that on 25 because they need to be identical. On frame 13, which is when the arm's back, we're going to set the Z rotation to almost back to zero, really. So let's just do that. I don't want to go all the way back, though. That's pretty nice, like that. So it's round about three and a half. So if we have a look at that again, so I'll have a look at it in this view here. You can see that that arm bending forward adds a lot to this arm swing. If we have a look at it in this view, it also now helps the arm not to look like it's swinging out so much uh, and makes it look quite natural, which is what I'm looking for. There is one more change that I want to make to this arm swing, though, just to add a little bit more uh, fluidity to it. So with the elbow joint selected, we're going to put an offset on it. So let's just get all the rotate values and we'll select them. And we're going to do curves, pre-infinity cycle, curves, post-infinity cycle. You can see that that now keeps that animation going forever. I'll select them all and then holding shift and my middle mouse button, I'm just going to move them along five frames. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And you can see that has now moved along. So if we now check that out in this view here. Yeah, it just makes the arm look a little bit more casual. Let's just take off the extra frame to remove the, the bit of lag in there. Yeah, so that's not bad at all. That's the right arm complete. And what we do for the left arm is we basically just repeat that, but we're reversing the frames. Um, because we know what the values are that we want, we'll just type these in and make it nice and quick. So let's go to frame one select the shoulder so the values that we know we want for this are 75 70 and 85 and we'll set that and we'll also set it on frame 25 beautiful then we'll move to frame 13 and make our change and that needs to be minus 30 70 and minus 55 and that kind of brings that forward so we'll then set that on 13 so we're happy with that then we need to get the elbow oh no 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 I've forgotten a step we need to go back we need to go back and we need to put the corrections in so on frame 7 we need to have the correction of 30 75 and 20 and we'll set that and then we'll go to 19 and add our other correction which in this case is 35 70 and 20 and we'll set that and that just stops things from going too wild now we can move on to our elbow and in this case we're going to have on frame one our z rotate was about 3.5 on the other arm wasn't it so we'll set that and just put a slight bend in the elbow and then we'll set it on frame one and frame 25. And then let's just check what value we had on the other arm. On the frame, well, it was frame six now, wasn't it? So it was basically 48. So that's what we'll set this one to. So on frame 13, we're going to set it to 48. Awesome. We're going to press S on the keyboard to set that. And we're going to get an offset going on as well. So let's just press A to view all our curves. Make sure that they're all showing up. Select them all. Then it's going to be curves, pre-infinity cycle, curves, post-infinity cycle. Yep, that's working. And then we're going to offset these by five frames. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant. 
and then we're going to take off that extra frame so we can preview and let's press play so that's not bad at all how's it looking in this view pretty walky I like that the last step that we're going to do then is to just add a little bit of weight to the head and then we can call this walk cycle complete and I'm going to do that on this joint here which you will see can control this angle on the head so we're going to go here so on frame one then what we're going to do is just rotate this up slightly and it does need to be just slightly something like that so i've gone minus 0 0.335 on that and we're going to set that on 1 and 13 and 25 set and then on frame 7 this is when we've kind of finished putting the weight down we're going to move the head down a little bit and this we're putting our um, offset in by default here but we're going to move this forward again not too much so I've gone about 2.3 so set and then on frame 19 we'll do the same I'm just going to type this in 2.3 and set and then what we'll do is just see how that looks in this view here let's just take off that extra frame yeah and that just adds a little bit of a bob to the head makes it look nice so let's just have one last preview of this before we wrap up so I'm just going to turn off these views here take a look at it in the front view nice so keep in mind that there is a lot more that we could do to this we could have had a lot more sway to the hips uh, we could have if we wanted to sort of counter animated the head to make it hold a bit more straight when he's walking but I quite like that it sways I think it looks charming uh, some people don't like that and you might choose to take that out you can continue to work on this as much as you want but for my purposes and for what I want to do I'm going to consider this done so let's just stop that preview then and we're going to go to file save scene as and I'm going to call this one walk cycle so let's just change the name so 13 walk cycle and when it becomes time to export this from Maya and import it into Unreal Engine we'll be coming back into this file just to make sure that we export all of the frames that we need um, so we're not 100% done with this yet but we are done with it for now what that means is that in the next step we are going to be attacking the run cycle so I look forward to seeing you for that well done for getting the walk cycle complete we are now going to put a run cycle together so this is going to be the last of our complicated cycles that we need to do for this character so let's do what we've done so far and we're going to just open our clean rig again so let's go to open scene and what did I call it clean rig there we go and now because of the way this is set up I just need to set my cameras up again so I'll do that quickly so that's the camera set up and now this one's going to be about a 22 frame cycle so what we'll do for that is we'll put in up until frame 23 so that we've got room to loop this and we'll take the final frame off when we're done and we'll get straight into it so we're going to go to frame one which is where we are and let's just go to the channel box so we can see what values we have and we'll select the hips and the first thing that we'll do as we normally do is just take the hips down a little bit yeah that looks pretty good and we also want to rotate him forward a little bit so that he looks like he's got some forward momentum and we'll just rotate him forward and what looks good about that and that will then necessitate just selecting the head controller and bringing that back so that he's still looking forward he shouldn't be looking at the ground he should be looking ahead to where he's running so that looks quite awkward so far so now let's get the legs sorted so we'll get the left leg first and we want this one to be the one that goes forward so let's just bring it forward a little bit and up a little bit and think about where we want this to be so I think I want it to be slightly higher than this this 
is called the straight leg pose and actually both feet are above the ground. So I'm going to go for something like that and that should mean that I can bring it further out and we also want to just rotate this around. That looks pretty nice. And then we're going to get the right leg and this one needs to go back. So let's bring this one up a little bit. I'm going to take this one up quite high to get started, I think. Bring it back as well. And let's just work out what the rotation is going to be as well. Yes, yeah, something like that, I think. So we want this to be quite um, bent round. We're going to get like the floppy effect on the foot. So that looks pretty good. And then we'll move that back further. Something like that. We're just going to bring that up a little bit higher. Yeah, that's quite good. So that kind of creates our first position on the leg. So you can see that this leg here is kind of going out and forward. Let's just double check the position of that, see if I'm happy with it. I'm just going to bring it slightly further forward just to get the extended leg. Yeah. Okay, and that's going to do it for frame one on the leg. So we need to set the hips and both feet controllers. And then we'll just press S on the keyboard to put that first frame in place. Now we're going to move along. And the kind of center, the end of this first step is going to be frame 12. But we're going to just mess with the spacing a little bit so that we get a sense of hanging in the air and the feet moving quickly. And hopefully this will become clear as we put it together. But what that means is we're just going to move two frames forward for this next pose. And that's going to be to frame three. And this is going to be our down pose. And because it's the down pose, the hips are going to move down a little bit. Only ever so slightly, something like that, I think. And I'm just going to set that key on there now. And then we'll get the left leg. And this is going to now be flat on the ground. So we're going to take the rotate off of the z-axis. Make sure that that's going to be flat. And then we need to work out where we want this to be. I'm also just going to turn off cameras here. So it's clear that this is the ground, this line here. That's what we're aiming for. So let's just bring this down. To about there. I'm just going to bring this back a little bit more. I like that, yeah. And just make sure that I'm happy with the position of this on the ground. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And then we're just gonna do some work on the right leg as well. So we'll get that selected. Now let's just move this into place. So I'm gonna actually make this a little bit higher. And position kinda like that, we're just bringing this forward. The down pose is also kind of a cross between a down pose and a passing pose in a walk cycle. So you can see that this leg's starting to come forward as well. And we're just going to move the rotation on this foot a little bit so that it's not quite as harsh now. Mm, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so that position feels pretty nice. Let's set the keys on both feet controllers and on the hips as well. And now, so we've done frame one, frame three. We're now going to do frame five, and this is going to keep the movements quite snappy. And then we're going to start spacing them out a little bit going after this. But for frame five, this is what we call the push pose. Um, and we also need the hips to be moved up a little for this one. So let's make sure the hips are selected. And we're going to move this up. Yeah, that looks good. And on this one, the left leg moves back quite a lot. I think you can see that's now struggling to contact the ground. So we're going to have to um, rotate the foot around as well to make this happen. So let's just get that set up. Let's see. That looks pretty good. And that means that we can then move this up. Yep, yeah, that looks nice. And now we can move this back.
Yeah, to about there, I think. So I'm happy with that, but the left leg being back means that the right leg now needs to come forward. So let's bring this forward to about there. And I also want to move it down, that's far too high. That looks good. And then obviously we need to rotate this around as well because that doesn't look right. So let's just bring that to about there. We still want a little bit of drag on this. We're not going to make it perfectly straight. Uh, something like that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that as a position. So that's the push pose done. So let's make sure that we set keys on everything. So the hips and both feet. And we'll press S on that. And now we're going to move, instead of going to frame 7, we need to now start to slow this down. This is where we're going to begin to like hang in the air. So we're going to move to frame 8. And on frame 8, we're going to put our up pose. So now the hips need to go up to their highest point. So let's select those. And we're going to go a fair bit higher. About that, I think. And if you want to make sure that yours looks like mine, you can always copy the properties I'm using here in the channel box. So that's my hips in place. We're then going to get the left foot. I like to do the left foot first. And this is going to go back a little bit and maybe up a bit too. Let's move it up first. Yeah, that's quite nice. And then let's move it back a bit. Yep, and we're going to have to rotate this as well just to make it make sense. Yeah, that's cool. So that's now behind the character. So let's get the right leg, and this is obviously going to need to come forward a little bit now. So let's move it forward first, if it'll let me. Oh, no, I need to move it up a bit as well. Yeah, that's better. Uh, let's just keep moving this out. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. And this now does need to be rotated again. So let's get that to where we want it to be. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So you can see he's now leaping quite high up in the air. Um, and that's just come from the push post. So he's pushed himself up into the air. Uh, and now he's kind of swapping his stride over. This is all looking pretty good. So let's get the hips and both feet controllers. And we'll set a key there. And that basically does it for the positions that we need. What we need to do now is frame 12 needs to basically be identical to frame 1. But we need to swap the leg positions. So let's start setting that up then. So we'll go to frame 1 first of all. And we'll select our hips. These are just going to be identical. So we're going to copy that. Move to frame 12 and paste. Lovely. And then we need to copy the feet but swap them over. So just so I can kind of organize this in my mind, I always go for the back foot first. And then I copy it. And then I select the other foot, go to the frame that I want to be on, and then paste. And you can see that that has worked apart from the fact that as with the walk cycle, the foot has swapped over. So we need to just invert this x-axis, take away the minus, press enter and then we'll press S just to make sure that that keyframe is set and the foot will stay there. And then we need to do the same for the other foot. So we'll go to frame one, we're gonna copy. Now we're gonna select this foot, go to frame 12, paste, and then invert the X axis and set the keyframe. Okay, so you can see that these first two frames are quite close together and then it got a little bit slower and then slower again. Uh, and that makes it kind of hang in the air. And now we're going to repeat the same kind of timing and spacing. So that's frame 12 done. I'm happy with that. So the next one's going to be two frames on frame 14. And we'll be copying from frame 3 to get that. So let's go to 3 and get the hips. We'll copy that. Then we're going to go to frame 14. And we're going to paste. So the hips are fine. And then back to frame 3. And now we need to start swapping the legs over. So let's get that leg there and copy select the other leg move to 14 and paste and invert the x-axis and set back to frame 3 then we're going to copy select the other foot 
go to 14, paste and paste. And then let's make the change to the X axis and set. Okay, so that's coming together. Now we need to do another two frames on. So we'll be on frame 16 and we'll be copying from frame five to make that happen. So let's go to frame five first. I'll select whichever foot is at the back and we'll copy it. Select the front foot, go to frame 16 and paste. And then do our little inverty trick and set back to frame five. Copy, select the other foot, go to 16 and paste. Make our little change here and set. So far, so good. We can see that now we've got one more frame to do, which is frame eight, and that's going to be three frames on. So we're going up to 19 now. So let's go to frame eight. I'm going to select the back foot first and copy. Go to 19, paste and paste. And then invert the translate X and set. Go back to frame eight, copy, get the other foot, go to 19 and paste and invert. I've done something wrong there. So let's just go back and see if we can work this out. So back to frame eight. So we'll try and copy this front foot, I think. Then we'll select the other foot, go to 19 and paste. Okay, let's invert this and set. And I don't think I remember to set the keyframe here. So let's just invert this one again and set. Okay, that does look a little bit tidier. And I forgot to do the hips on this one as well. So let's go back and get the hips. Copy and put this on 19, paste and paste. And I also have got to do it on 16 as well. I'm getting forgetful. I've been doing this for too long. Copy and go to 16. Is that right? I think it's right. And paste. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if this is coming together. We'll just have a little look in this view. Yeah, nothing's broken yet. Okay, so the final bit of work that we need to do is just to get everything to loop on frame 23. So I can just select all three controllers that we've animated on so far, go to frame one and copy, then go to 23 and paste. And now to see whether or not this looks okay, I'm gonna take the last frame off. So I'm just showing frames one to 22. We'll hit play. And that's not bad. So you can see that he's going up and down the feet are going much faster when they contact the ground and then he kind of gets the effect of hanging in the air, which looks pretty cool. So that's the first part of our run done. And that's the leg sorted, the lower body portion. Um, as with all our animations, we're trying to do this as quick as possible. This is very much just a block out and we're allowing it to look quite robotic. What we should have done really there is have some sway in the hips and all kind of stuff going on. But this is enough just to get us to do what we need to do and it'll look fine when we're done. So our next step is to get a little bit of um, a sway going on with the shoulders to support the swinging of the arms. And the controller that we want for that one is there's one just here on the spine. It's very small, but you can see it's just there. It's called chest origin effector on this one. And if I've just put my rotate tool on, you should be able to see that this is perfect for sort of rotating the chest and everything above it. You just undo that. And what we're going to do is just rotate this and try and put some holds in as well. And hopefully it'll become clear what I mean by that. So we've got on this one, the left leg forward. So we're going to be bringing the right shoulder forward because we kind of do it in opposites. So on frame one, we're going to rotate by about that much. So I'm close to eight on there, you can see. And then I'll just press S there. And then we're gonna put the next one on frame nine and we're gonna rotate the other way. So because I went for about eight on X there, we're gonna go for about minus eight here, just to try and keep things fairly symmetrical. That'll do. And then what we're gonna do is copy this and paste it onto frame 12. And that's because we want his shoulder to stay in the same place for about those three frames. And that's kind of aligning it up 
with the hang in the air that we did on the legs as well. So it's kind of holding that. And now what we'll do is just copy frame one and we're going to put that on frame 19. So we'll paste it there and that'll bring it back. And we're also going to put it on frame 23. Paste. And now if we just play this again, you can see that we've got our run going on and we've also got a bit of a sway in the shoulders as well, which is going to support the swinging arms. So far, so good, I think. I can stop that. Back to frame one. So the next thing we're going to do is work on the shoulders and the elbows. But before we do that, because it's kind of easier when they're still up by the side, we're just going to turn the hands into little fists. So let's just select this end controller here with the rotate tool on. You might just have to rotate this around a couple of times just to get that to make a bit of a fist. And then we'll get the old thumb controller. Rotate this around. Probably rotate that around a little bit as well. And then bring it in. So they can clip through a little bit because it's going to be moving. Um, the player won't be able to tell. And then we're going to do the same over here. And I could probably just copy and paste the values from the other hand. But I don't want to do that. So there's that part done. Get the thumb controller. Not that one, not yet. Uh, we'll do that one. Bring that around a bit and then bend the thumb in like that. So that's going to be our two fists created. At this stage, I suppose if you wanted to, you could turn this, uh, put the arms back and turn it into a bit of a Naruto run. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have the swinging arms. But it's an option if that's what you choose to go for. Okay, so we'll work on the shoulder closest to us first because it's easy to see in this view. And we'll get the... Right shoulder controlling. See, I've accidentally selected two there, so I'll just be a bit more careful with my selection. I only want one. And then we need to kind of get this one as well positioned as we can because everything's going to be built off of what we do on this first frame. So what we'll do first is just rotate this arm down. So we'll bring it down to about there. And then just so that I can help myself to line this up, and I'm going to put this back in a minute, but I'm going to put the arm into kind of the position it will be in. And that's going to help me to line up the shoulder joint to put this where I think it should be. Okay, so I think that kind of position there works for me. So you can see that the arm kind of is mostly straight down. It kicks out a little bit, but getting this position right is really important. So you can see the values that I've ended up with there, um, and that's pretty much where I want that to be. Then what I'm going to do is just for now, because I'm going to come back to this later anyway, I'm just going to straighten that arm out again just by zeroing out those properties there. That's good. And then because I'm happy with the position, or I think I'm happy with the position of the shoulder on frame one, I'm just going to press S to set a key on that value. So now similar to what we did on the chest controller, we're going to use the same frames really. So we're going to now move to frame nine. And on this frame, we need to rotate the arm back really. So we're just going to take it back like that. It's okay in this case for the arm to just kick out a little bit. I'm going to use different values to help us to get to that. So I think the position I want is about that. So you can see I've just kind of tilted the wrist out a little bit. The arm does kick out um, and it's swung quite a long way back. So in that position, I'm just going to press S on my keyboard. And then to get that hold, I'm also going to set that on frame 12, like so. And then for frames 20 and 23, just like we did with the chest, we're going to get frame 1 and copy that onto frame 20. So we'll paste it there. And we'll paste it onto 23 as well. And then we'll just have a little look at how that's coming together so quite robotic at the moment uh, and I think once we get a bit of swing in the elbow that's going to come together let's just see how it looks here yeah that's not a bad start 
So now we need to move on to the elbow. So for this one, we're going to select the elbow joint just there. I'm going to go back to frame one. And then we need to get this rotation dialed in. Now the elbow is basically a hinge joint. So we only really need to rotate it on this one axis here. That one should be fine. So it's rotate Z for me. So I'll rotate it on frame one round about to... About there looks good. And then we're going to have to set that key. And then we're going to go to frame 9. And let's rotate this again. But we probably don't need it as far this time. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go to frame 12. So I don't want this in exactly the same place, I don't think. But probably close. Yeah, that looks cool. We'll set that. Now we need to go to frame 20. And let's rotate this quite a bit forward. Yeah, that's quite nice. And then, of course, frame 23 needs to be copied from 1. So that they're identical. Paste. Okay, let's see how this is now looking. Yeah, that's pretty good. That will work, I think. So we've now got the the top part of our little robot guy going on his right arm. So far, so good. What we need to do now is get the values for the other arm. And we're just going to copy those from here. So frame 1, we're actually going to copy from frame 12. So of this shoulder, we'll go to frame 12 and we'll copy that value. And then we'll select our other shoulder controller, go to frame one and paste. And you can see that, that now puts it back. And what's cool about this is it also copies the elbow position for us, meaning that we don't have to put it in this time. So that's frame one. Now let's go back to the right shoulder. So we've just done that one, haven't we? So the next one's going to be frame 20. So we'll copy that and then go back to our shoulder and 20 is going to be pasted onto frame 9 in this case so let's paste that on there and you can see that that has gone forward and then what we'll do is go back to the other shoulder again and this time so we've just done 20 so now we'll do 23 copy that get the shoulder oh, I missed go to frame 12 and then we need to paste Working out so far, so good. So now, I think we're going to be copying from frame 9 on the right shoulder. So we'll copy that. Go to this arm here. And then we're going to go to frame 20. And hopefully we're going to paste this. That looks good. And then back to the right arm, hopefully for one final time. Go to frame 12 and copy. And get our other shoulder, move to 23, and paste. Hey, okay. So now let's just take off that extra looping frame. And we'll hit play and see what we got. Okay, so we can see we've got arms swinging backwards and forward. They're doing their thing. We've got the legs going. No legs are crossing over. Let's check it in this view here. You know what? That's not bad. So again, there's lots that we could do to just smooth this out. We could put a little more overlap in the arms. We could also add some um, overlapping animation to the wrists as well. But for now, I think that's going to do the job. We'll move on to the head, I think. So let's have a go at sorting this head animation out then. So I'm going to need to select the head controller and I'm going to go into wireframe view here so that I can see when it's not straight. And I'm also going to change this view here to a front orthographic view because if I just press 4 here as well, you can see that that's basically not straight. I think I'm going to turn the grid on just to give me an idea of when things are straight as well. So we know that on frame 1, things aren't going to be lined up and we can see that. So we're going to use this axis here to just sort of bring the head back straight. And I'm also going to bring it straight in this view as well. 
and that looks pretty good. So we'll set that. And now we're going to keep the same spacing as with the chest because that's where things are going to change. So it's frame nine where this is most extreme. So we'll try and put this back. So I'm just going to now rotate that around to get that straight. And we're going to need to rotate the head to get this back straight as well. Nice. And then if we just keep that the same at frame 12, that should work out nicely. And you can see that that now loses that as we go further on. So we'll copy the values that we've got on frame one and we'll move to frame 20 and we'll paste those in and that should straighten it out and we'll paste those in again at 23. And then we'll check for any abnormalities. And as it's playing, that looks fairly clean. So let's just press six in that view. Yeah, not bad. And we'll just go back to our perspective view and see what we think to that. That's okay, let's take off the extra frame. Not bad, not bad. So we'll just try and get the head now to stay the same sort of height. So we can see here it's basically looking up, but here it's not. So let's just try and correct that. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit of variation in this, so long as there's not too much. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's okay. So I think that's going to do it for most of this animation. What we need to do is just select all the controllers that we've put animation on and do pre and post infinity just in case we decide to make any changes to it. So that's going to be that controller, that controller, that controller. We also did the chest, we did the shoulders, and we did the head. So for all these curves, and I'm just going to select in here absolutely everything, we're going to do curves pre-infinity cycle and curves post-infinity cycle. I'm just going to select the uh, elbows separately. Let's just deselect everything first. So elbow and other elbow. And then we'll select everything that makes part of this. And we're going to do curves, pre-infinity cycle, curves, post-infinity cycle. And just check that that hasn't broken anything. Yep, yeah, I think that looks okay. That's going to do the job for us. Let's just give this one final look. So we'll just turn off the controllers here. Press play. Take a look at this from behind, which is where the player is mostly going to see it, I would imagine. Yep, yeah, I think that works. So again, we could make this a little bit smoother. But for what we're trying to achieve, to just get this character put together pretty quickly, I think that looks wicked. So, what we need to do now is save our work. So, file, save scene as. And I've been numbering these. So, this is going to be 14, run cycle. And then we'll hit save. And that means that we're now almost done with the animation section of this course. All we need to do now is create a jump and we'll be ready to start setting this little chap up in Unreal Engine. So I'll see you in the next step where we'll make him jump. Okay, so as promised then, we're going to finish the animation section of the exercise we're doing here. And you'll be probably relieved to hear that this is just a one frame animation. We're just going to keep the jump really, really simple. Let's open our clean rig and get this set up. Our jump pose is gonna be heavily inspired by Mega Man. So we're gonna open our clean rig. Here it is. And we don't need to worry too much about the view on this one, we just need to build our pose. So, let's just give him some fists again. 
Mega Man has fists when he jumps. There we go. So we've got a couple of fists. Now, Mega Man, when he falls, tends to be rotated back slightly. And we're going to do that for the top half of the body like that. And then we're going to bring the head back. And I want him to look down slightly here so that he's kind of looking for where he's going to fall. Or land, rather. And then the arms tend to go up in the air. So let's bring the arms up. And they kind of, the palms look like they're facing forward. So we'll do that. So that looks pretty good for that arm. And then we'll do this one here. Uh, let's just on this one. Let's rotate this from the elbow. See how that looks. And then, oh, hello. That's not right. That's better. I think we'll bring one of the arms forward. I don't want this to be too symmetrical. And then we'll get his leg controller. Uh, I am actually, I've got um, some reference images of the Mega Man jump open while I'm doing this, in case you're wondering. You might, you might find it useful to do something similar. So let's just rotate that like that. And we'll just kind of rotate the leg out a little bit. Oh, that's the knee. Do this as well. And then the other foot, we do want a bit of a bend on it. Have I got the right controller there? I haven't. It's this one I wanted. Like that. And we're just going to rotate around so that it looks like the foot's trying to find the ground. I think I'm going to bring both feet back a little bit. And I think that will pretty much do it for that pose. It will get across um, the idea that he's jumping. And that's really it for this one. So we are just going to select everything. We'll set a key on frame 1 to make sure that they stay there. Uh, and that's it. So let's save this one. File, save scene as. And this one's going to be, where were we up to? 14. Although they've gone a bit weird. I'll put that one back in a bit. I didn't name it properly. I didn't leave the MB in. So this one's going to be 15 jump. And save. And that's really it for the jump animation. We could make this more complicated. We could have him so that he kind of wobbles in the air. And we could add a land animation. But if I kept adding things to this, we'd never get the exercise finished. So that will do it. In the next step then, we will be looking at how you go about exporting all of these animations properly and then we can get into Unreal Engine and begin importing and putting our character together. So I'll see you in the next part for some exciting exporting action. I'm able to continue making these videos thanks to the ongoing support of my amazing Patreon community. If you'd also like to support Game Dev Academy via Patreon then check out the link in the description below. Thank you.